Welcome to Wellness and Wonder for another episode number 24. Today, today we will discuss art, art in the spiritual world with the amazing Esteban Fuentes de Maria. Why art? Art supports our emotional intelligence. Art really supports the expression of feelings that maybe we can't put into words. Art helps us discover joy in oneself and often we will be surprised. I personally know that uh, in some cases, situations and feelings are very hard to express in just words. So I feel, and we all do, that art is a result of inspiration and uh, uh, an inspiration as a spiritual nature. So art is in its base, spiritual activity. If I had to define art, I could say that it is the communication of the human heart and soul with the sense of existence, the discovering of deep secrets penetrating to the source of things. And the spirituality reigns supreme in art. So known as the driving force of art, spirituality is the art expressive vehicle as well as a special voice. And today, our special voice is related to a special, special artist and human being, Esteban Fuentes de Maria. Hi, Esteban. How are you? Very happy to, to be here with you, even from distance, but very excited to have this conversation about the, the, the meaning of art, which is something extremely complicated and at the same time very simple to express. Because as art, it's this very Baroque feeling of of both beauty, of, 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 of this deep, as you said, the secrets, these hidden feelings that we can only express through this beautiful way of communication, which is the arts. And I'm very excited to, to be connected finally with you after, after so many weeks of, of trying to- Of waiting <laughs> to for you, Esteban. <laughs> no, thank God, it's been very busy days. I am, I'm super happy to be back home, back here in Mexico. After such a long time in, in, in your country, after such a long time in Italy, and also in, in Istanbul. And yes. I'm because happy I to know, with my pieces. So. Yeah, you are organizing amazing exhibitions, and every art gallery, of course, wants you as an artist, just because, uh, not only because of your energy, also because of your magnificent works. So uh, how did you spend the last days, Esteban? Tell us. <laughs> well, these last days have been extremely beautiful. Like uh, seeing my work in, in Italy in, 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 such a, in such a place for art, wow. with such strong history, it's, a, it's a, an amazing honor for me. And at the same time, having my first exhibition a few days ago in, in Istanbul, in, in this magical city that I relate so much with, because even if it's such an exotic experience for me, it's at the same time a mirror to my culture in Mexico. So I think that's the most beautiful um, like thing I've got through art in my life, to be able to travel around the globe and to see so many similarities between myself and people that I could only meet through my pieces. I could only uh, travel and experience thanks to my work. So I'm very thankful with all I've been doing lately, but very happy to be back home as well. And uh, I, in, in, I love the, the things you, you just said that uh, basically as an artist, you need connection to people and to feel connected to people that understand you and you understand it builds this uh, uh, spiritual connection where you feel inspired also, right? But it's not always because of the spiritual connection, but as you said, it's a way to explain myself. And I think that's where I would like to begin. Yes. Because 250 years ago, my family started painting. So um, the, the mother tongue, the mother language, is defined not only as the first one that you speak, not only the first one that you used to communicate, but also the one you inherit, the one that runs through your veins, the one that runs through your blood. And that's my case with art, because there's never rules for an artist. There's rules to define art, and there's rules to determine what is and what is not, and what can be considered and what cannot be considered art. But to determine the life of an artist, that's what makes us artists, how unique the experience is. So my approach with art, I could consider it very, very unique, because not many people have the, this, this good luck, this fortune to to have art in, in their families and to be accepted with it. Because a lot of people ask me, 
um, when did you decide you were going to become an artist? Or when did you decide to commit your life to art? And I always tell them, it's like, if you ask me, when did I decide to be gay? It's not something <laughs> I chose. It's not something I decided. We we're born freedom, like this. Freedom to express <laughs> yourself. <laughs> no, the same, literally the same. I did not chose any of them. And it's not something that I, that I can decide. It's something that I love them. That it's something that makes me excited, that makes me happy, that makes me feel passionate about. And, and yes, it's something that I was very lucky to find in my roots because my family started painting birds. Birds are the main inspiration of my work. We started painting these animals 150 years ago. Wow. When there were no cameras to document these animals and my family was in charge of doing the list of all the, of all the birds who lived in Mexico. Wow. It was not even Mexico back then. It was the... Uh, the, the, the kingdom of Spain, but the American part of the new Spain. And they started studying all of these animals, that even some of them nowadays live here in my studio, because of their beauty, because of what they represent. And births represent freedom. So if we go to the spiritual part now, that's what I try to communicate with my work, because the most important thing we have in life is freedom. If I ask you or my friends or people that surround me, what's the most important thing you have? Some of them will say love, some others maybe would say family or friends or work, some might even say money, but at the end it's not. The most important thing we have is freedom because it's what allows us to chase what we really want. So well, that's what I learned from birds. Love, I mean, sorry if I'm not Esteban. Love is deeply connected to freedom because we are able to love ourselves and the others only if we feel free within our own spirit. So I would say that, uh, sorry, because for me, love is the most important thing ever. I would say that love is connected to everything we said. I don't know if you agree. Love for your work, love for your passion, love for your talent, love for your work, love for your family. It's all about love at the end of the day. And it's, and it's the freedom we have that allows us to chase those things we love, but also those things we love are the fuel to the freedom that we feel, so we chase the things. So of course they're strictly connected. But nowadays, I think most of humans are allowed to feel love. But not all of the humans, because it's in our nature, it's not that we're allowed or not, but we do. But not all of the humans are allowed to chase the love. As one of the last pieces I made that was inspired in love in a, in a Muslim, which is honestly quite open, and yeah. especially Constantinople. Like Istanbul is a very open city. I never felt in any way constricted, but I do, I got to see a lot of people who were. So I was painting this little piece that's called a secret kiss. And it's this kiss of two people, but hidden behind the, the wings of a butterfly. And wow. I was telling that the uh, butterfly, like so a very, very important element right now in my work since the beginning of this year, because I was very lucky to be one of those artists that can work from home because my studio is my house. But what happens to all of the people who couldn't? They were locked. And uh, somehow I was locked as well because I was just here, uh, like I just I was here in my house. So I felt that I was like this worm that was entering the cocoon. And I was happy to see the months later that it was a transformation and that it was a successful metamorphosis because my work changed a lot. And now I'm honoring the butterflies, expressing how I feel like I kind of became one. Amazing. And uh, let's. Uh, uh use this metaphoric sentence maybe to give a meaning to what we just said. For example, the butterfly, it is free, but it dies very soon. Sometimes freedom can be dangerous because we are not uh, um, uh, controlled by anyone and we can get lost easily or we can die as the butterfly in this case that is free. Is it uh, uh, this meaning of um, death is related to the butterfly or is not within it? No, I'm not touching yet. The, okay. I'm, I'm just doing the flight now. I'm not touching yet the... The danger stage. of freedom. Yeah. I, I feel like I just came out of the cocoon. So I'm, I'm not yet in that part. And I'm just right now inspired in the part of flying, of, of this unexpected way of flying. Because I, I don't know if the worms know that they're going to become butterflies after being locked in their cocoons. So it's just a surprise. 
I feel like it's just a surprise waiting for us. Yes, and you know that uh, the butterfly that you always draw, it's, I have the same in my room. I will send you a picture. So I couldn't believe it. I think it is a, well, that's, it's a special butterfly. It is from South America or Bali, I don't remember. The blue butterfly. From South America. From South America. Well, it depends because in that, in that group of butterflies, there's like around 70 species. But those big blue, Butterflies, they're, yeah, they're uh, spread all around the central part of South America. From the, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an animal from the Amazon. So, so yes, but I, but I bring them from France because they're not legal to, to get here in Mexico. So I, I bring them from a collector in France. <laughs> amazing, amazing. It's better also to use that, even though they don't last long, to use butterflies that are already dead so you can get it, get it. it I lasts for long yeah and it, it lasts for very long they go through process before i put them in my pieces that makes them last even longer because they have scales and the scales will never lose their color so hopefully these pieces will last a very long time amazing um before asking you uh, let's uh, uh talk about the meaning of your arts and then of course I would love to know your techniques because uh, not your secrets because we cannot share them but uh, I'm really impressed about your works so the art effect uh, Esteban the arts can help us express thoughts that are beyond words as we said so helping people reach into largely unconscious parts of the mind and experience dimensions of self otherwise buried and uh, voiceless so uh, which uh, kind of uh, feeling do you feel while you express uh, your feelings and not in words through your paintings? What do you feel? They're, they're portraits of life. So I couldn't, uh, it could simply not, not tell you what I feel because first of all, I'm in kind of a trance when I paint. That's why, why sometimes I, I can do it while, while speaking or while talking to a friend or while doing something else because literally my hands disconnect and I barely know what they do. Like, of course, it's in my mind and in the process of my heart what I feel, but then the hands do it all by themselves. So I couldn't tell you what I feel when I paint. And, um, and it's so diverse because I see here so many paintings about suffering, so many about happiness, most of them about falling in love. So. It's just a very honest portrait of my life. It's, it's everything that I feel, it's all that I feel, and it's everything that goes through my veins. It's everything that goes through my mind, and it's also the fears, because I don't consider myself a, a, a person that lives with fear. Actually, I, I, I'm a very curious man, so, so, so it's very little things, the ones that scare me. And one of them, until a few years ago, was the full moon, the light of the full moon. And that's why I, I, I tried to find therapy in my work. Wow. And, I, and I started painting. And, and that's the point of a phobia, that you cannot explain it because it was so beautiful. And if I was outside in the countryside or, or walking in a park or riding a horse, seeing the full moon was a beautiful experience. But when I was here in my studio, I had to close the wooden doors that I have behind my, my balconies. Because I was so scared of the moonlight touching me. And even nowadays, I still have nightmares and it's hard for me to sleep. But, um, wow. well, but, I would but say it's only very little times where I can find therapy in my work because I usually suffer when I paint. Incredible what you just said. It's, I never heard of someone uh, being scared of the moon and it's so special. I believe, you know why Esteban, sometimes we reject things that are very, that have a big impact on ourselves. So I would say it's because you love the moon so much and it has a big impact in your bloodstream, in your head, in your dreams, that it scares you. Sometimes we reject things that make, make us feel very passionate or that make us feel very high uh, in general. And so sometimes, uh, as you said, being aware of this emotion, drawing it, uh, as you said, can help you to get away the fear. Incredible, very powerful. And uh, actually, yes, that, that's something that I could tell about, about the process that I live when I paint. Because the last piece that I presented in this exhibition a few days ago in Istanbul, in Soho House, are an exorcism. 
Because when I first arrived to, to Turkey earlier this year, when I moved there uh, uh, in, in February, I, I was very in touch with a very close friend, and now a very close friend, but a girl I met back then. Uh, her name is Volka, and she's this extremely beautiful Ottoman princess that is as superstitious as any Turkish person is. So she was explaining me all of the rituals from her culture. And she was telling me that if someone curses you through an object, such as a gift, like a present or something, and you receive this, but the thing, the item is cursed, the only way to get rid of it is throwing it to the Bosphorus. So I was unpacking my, my stuff and I was looking at my binoculars, my telescopes, my objects, all my paintings, brushes. I, I always fly with a bunch of things and that I carry on like <laughs> almost like a gypsy. And, I, I, and all of them are tools to paint. So I was, I was thinking that every time that I paint, I, I, I realized back then that every time that I paint, I'm performing an exorcism. Because I'm, 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 I'm pushing into the canvas the best part of me, but also the worst part of myself. So I decided that the first pieces, the first paintings, I always paint in wood. So those first paintings that I, that I could um, paint, that I could create, sorry, in, in, in Turkey, were going to be thrown to the sea. So I told a very close friend who gave me, who gave me a beautiful boat from the 60s, and he told me, okay, go paint in my boat, sail the, the Bosphorus, and then throw them if you want. So thank God all of these paintings, after being thrown to the water, floated. And it was the first time I had an exhibition in a horizontal format, because instead of having the pieces hanging on the walls, wow. they were all looking in the sky, floating, facing wow. the clouds. Wow. A beautiful day in the middle of it. The water was extremely cold, and after throwing them, and, and of course, after having a few glasses of wine, I understood that I'm also a piece, because I designed myself, and I'm, I'm something I created. So I threw myself to the water, and like, thank God for the people that support the environment, which I consider being one of them. I, I had the chance to collect all of my pieces before dying from anemia from <laughs> or something like that, because it was extremely cold. So I put all of the pieces back into the boat. My friends were helping me to, to, to put them back into the boat and then to pull me back into the ship. And it was a very beautiful exorcism, and I do feel like I'm a, I'm a different person since then. So these pieces that I presented in Soho House uh, last week in Istanbul are the pieces that I threw to the water. And I think nowadays, they, they're quite abstract, so maybe they're not my most beautiful piece, just what the performance was. I think that was my most beautiful piece. Wow. It's about also the performance, I agree. And it's incredible about art reveals the beauty and all in the world, altering our brain chemistry and inspire spiritual awareness, like you just said. So you understood you were also peace that you were creating yourself. So that's why we call it spiritual art, because it's about the experience, what it gives you, what you are aware of, what you feel. It's about feelings. And uh, was there the full moon when, uh, when, while you were throwing the pieces, magical pieces on the water? I think it was uh, a few days after the new moon. Okay, amazing. Uh, after the, uh, the... <laughs> Esteban, I would love to participate at one of your experiences because uh, I'm in love with your arts. And uh, thank you. So, I'm sure it's one. Yes. <laughs> Do you usually paint on wood? It's not uh, the yes. Most of my formats are wood because it's a uh, it's not simple wood. It's a uh, a union of two types of wood. Wow. But I collided by like to, to, to create my canvases. It's designed and we have the patent here in Mexico by an engineer that works here in the studio. And they're supposed to last forever because they're both very flexible, but at the same time, very resistant. Mm -hmm. And I think that as you, something you mentioned like a few minutes about the second questions and, uh, and, and about the secrets. No, I think that one of the most important things that art needs to involve, now talking about the technique, it's exactly that, it's the innovation, the innovation in the technique. And I think that artists, technique-wise, should never have secrets. Because one of the most important responsibilities we have is to do innovation in the techniques we use. So, so I think uh, technique-wise, yes, art artists should have no secrets. 
because we have the responsibility to share these innovations that we find during the experiments of our, our work. And I think that if someone is scared that people could copy their work, then it's not good enough. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I think that when, when, when we evolve in our techniques, we, it's something we should share. And uh, for example, right now, I'm working with a, with a very interesting project of ceramics that has been, uh, that has been developing here in Mexico for hundreds of years, and that it's called Talavera. It's a very beautiful way to do ceramics. Wow. And the way that the artists share these techniques with me is extremely beautiful and makes me feel so grateful and so thankful because they're so giving. And I feel so lucky that I can use this technique from hundreds of years. And I don't know yet, but I would love to be a teacher one day. Maybe if I have the patience one day yes. in the future. <laughs> Lots of patience. I'm sure if you have the knowledge, you can be a teacher, even if you don't have patience, because you can always teach people what you've learned through your experience, which is the best teaching ever, I think. Uh, Esteban, the true experience of life is the best teacher because it's something we lived, it's something we have learned, it's not something we, are, we have read only. So it is lived, which is more powerful. I love uh, to imagine this scene in my mind, which is the creative uh, artist, you, who first uh, sits and down and has the vision. Then there is the, the performing artist you that creates the performance and then the members of the audience that may make it become an active uh, participation of it. So uh, during your per performances, do you have lots of friends joining or do you usually select just a number of people? No, oh, it, it all depends. It all depends on the performance. I remember one I did uh, at the Louvre in, I think it was 2018, so yeah, four years ago in the museum and I had no one close to me, but the, the camera that was uh, that was recording the performance and a friend that I used. And apart from that, it was all people that was just there at the museum. It was quite a, a surprise for them, for the visitors, and also for me, because it was an honor to be presenting a performance in such an important museum. That was also the first one I visited the first time I went to Europe. But, um, I the but for example, the, the, the boat, yeah. Uh, I, I could only have six people there on the boat because of uh, because I also had musicians and we also had a team and uh, we didn't want to make such a big thing because it was not legal to sell in the Bosphorus back then because it, the, the country was still closed. So it all depends on the situation. But I believe that uh, the inspi most inspiring part of, of my life here inside the studio is drinking a glass of mezcal. And I don't like doing it alone, so I usually have friends around me. Yes, it's true. Amazing. So would you say regarding uh, all these uh, latest plays you have been visiting, like Istanbul, Mexico, uh, would you say that your art is closer to the mysticism Sufi of Istanbul and Turkey or closer to the anthropological surrealism of Mexico? <laughs> to both. And to that's both. what I like the most in France and in Italy. I do see them very close. And it's a mix of all of them. I think that's what makes it beautiful. Right? It's a mix of them. Yes. <laughs> yes, I agree. That's what I felt when I when I saw your paintings. And um, so, as we know, an artist uh, has to acknowledge uh, its perfection, but also is imperfection. As as an artist, as we said, we are free to express. There are no mistakes, but there is a, a growth, a continuous growth. Um, so. Do you think your paintings have been changing a lot since the last years, Esteban? Or uh, do you find, uh, how would you describe the growth you had along your career? Well, it, it's a constant metamorphosis. So now that you mention it, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe the butterfly has died a few times, but it's always prepared to grow. And also one of the birds that inspires me the most is the phoenix that it's, uh, we have improved the existence of this bird. Maybe it's just a legend or maybe it's smart enough to, to not let humans see her. But we are humans as, as phoenix birds because we have, to be, we have to be born from our own ashes. And ashes not only come from the fire of a, of a defeat, of a mistake, of well, everything can be a lesson. So the ashes can also come from a big su success, you know? Or it happens with Icarus, for example, when Dedalo, his father, designed this 
wings made out of the feathers of the eagles that were nesting on top of the tower were there. He flew very, 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 very high, close to the sun, and then he fell to the ground. What if he was a phoenix, no? So we have to learn from those mistakes. And I do believe it has changed a lot, especially this last year, because, for example, involving the butterflies or starting with ceramics and sculpture. Um, but especially last year, because I started sculpting these little pieces in metal, but, and it was the first time that I put my pieces for sale. Because I don't sell my pieces, I only do commissions or I, I've only sold very few ones to, to close friends or people that I somehow feel related. Wow. To. But it was selling was very complicated to move my work because I am very jealous and I like to keep it for myself. And, um, and last year I, I, was, I was thinking of what the situation was for most of the people in my country here in Mexico. Because I came to, I, I moved to Mexico. I moved back from Paris last year, just a few days before the lockdown began. And I, I sent all of the money that we raised to the families of the people who could not work from home here in Mexico. Wow. And I think that was a big metamorphosis for me. How much people could evolve themselves into the work of someone they barely know, or that they only knew from social media, for example, but felt inspired. So it helped me to, it, that, that situation helped me to realize how powerful the social media is, how, how big of a gallery I have in an in, in internet without having the pieces hanging on a museum and, and how powerful we are together because it was beautiful to see how many projects we could we could do and how many people we could reach with all the money that i i raised with these sculptures so and it was also a, a big uh, a, a big new step for me to to do uh, after paintings after so many paintings a three-dimensional piece it is true. It is uh, the success. Satisfaction is personal, but then the success is nice when it's shared all together. Totally agree with you. Of course, and especially with people who need it. That happens a lot in a country like this one in Mexico. I loved what you just said, uh, Esteban. So the profit of many arts that have been sold go to the community of artists that are not able to build the things themselves. This is an amazing concept. And I actually know that in Mexico, you are managing with other artists the Dracula project. Well, yes, I think it's important to, it's, it's very hard to find a connection between artists and yourself because it's a very complicated world. But when we get together, it's always fantastic results. But yes. Yeah. That you at some point realize that everything is involved with arts because art is so much about freedom that everything can relate to it. So even animals, everything you can help every day. And we're <laughs> talking about animals. Oh wow! Related. Hello, little monkey. Oh my God, it's so cute. Hello, what's her name? Her name is Lola. Lola. Oh. Yes. So cute. Her mother died last week, and she ended up. Oh, no. at the... Why? What happened to her mom? It was a car accident. Well, um, the infrastructure in Mexico is really bad. And uh, the highways in Mexico are one of the worst, uh, the worst uh, like dangers for the wildlife. So it's not only her, it's so many animals that lose their families every day. And well, at least this one end up in good hands and it's going with back. You. I can't believe it. She's I a wild know. monkey and you're keeping it with keeping her with you. I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> it's been only three days, but we've already developed a very, very, very strong connection, as you can see. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she's in love with you. <laughs> I love her. So lucky you are, Esteban. And your studio <laughs> looks awesome. Oh! <laughs> so many, so much is Oh, no, no, don't be sorry. She's always full of animals. And I consider myself a person who's strongly against the concept of pets because no matter if it's a monkey, a fish, a bird, cages are not meant for anyone, not for humans, not for no one. And no one should be, uh, no one should be powerful enough to put something inside a cage. So a lot of people see that the house is always full of animals, of birds, of eagles. And I'm very excited to also tell you that tomorrow four of my eagles are going back to, to, um, are going back to the Mexican skies, which makes me extremely proud because they were earlier this year and their nest fell during the, during the storm. 
And I raised them as, as, as babies, like since they were babies, literally. And then since two months ago, they have no contact with humans. They have a very big cage where they can fly and they started hunting their own prey. And tomorrow they're going to be set free back in, back in nature. So hopefully this little monkey will find her place in the jungle soon one day. Wow. And it's great to have at least for a few weeks or months these muses that I paint so close because it helps me to study them and to, and to paint them better. <laughs> yes. I can't wait to see those paintings about uh, animals, the future ones that you're going to make. So Esteban, I love your energy. Which kind of advices would you give to all these artists that have been, of course, uh, have been painting a lot during COVID, but maybe they lost their inspiration because they miss their lack of energy. Uh, what's your advice to the community of artists after COVID? Well, my advice would be a quote that I really like from Picasso that says that inspiration does exist, but it has to find it working. And I think that especially nowadays with the situation where, where we can all work from home and, uh, and adapt any space as a studio, we should all keep working and have the hands very busy, especially to the young artists, because we need to be very busy. We need to understand how professional the art world has to become, even more and more and more and more. And, and the only way to professionalize it is to take it serious. And the only way to take it serious is to be committed 100%. So it happens a lot, especially to the young artists, as you said, that they feel art as a hobby. And if they feel art as a hobby or as a spare time thing, I would just advise them to quit because art is a need. And, and, if, you, and if, you can, if you can sometimes be attached to this process, it's because maybe you don't have this strong need to do it. That's and it only should be uh, like on the hands of people that, that feel feel like it's their only way to express themselves in an honest way. And that's the most important part with arts. So, so Honesty. be honest with yourself. And that talks about freedom, because when you feel uh, free enough to be honest with yourself, not only with the people that, want, uh, that you want to see your work, but with yourself, because that's the most important part with art. If they don't see themselves reflected in the piece, it might not be art yet. So you can only be confident about what you are creating if you see yourself reflected on it. And if you see the best version of yourself reflected on this, you just create. So that would be my advice. Thank work you. and work and work. And it's work an advice of life uh, to be honest yes. with ourselves and with what we do, with the commitment we are going to. Yeah. Yes, and everyone pain, everyone can paint nowadays. Everyone, literally everyone, good or bad, but everyone can paint. Yeah. So to create peace, it has to move with a mirror. When, when we stand in front of a mirror, it doesn't stand still, even if we do. Because if you pay attention, you see yourself breathing. And if you get closer, you will see your breath fogging up the glass. <laughs> so, so that's what needs to happen with the pieces nowadays. You, you have to see yourself moving with them, as them floating in the Bosphorus, as them flying or being played by a monkey inside a studio. You need to see your art moving. That makes it alive. See, thank you, Esteban. My message after your words would be that through art, we can connect to a higher purpose. That category of art is uh, like Esteban art is vitally important as it raises awareness and inspires positive changes. So creative art relieves also, let's not forget stress, encourages creative thinking, increases brain plasticity, and the impacts other mental health benefits. So as a big poet says, art washes from the soul, the dust of everyday life. It's very beautiful <laughs> what you're saying. I hope this is not only an interview, but it uh, ends up becoming a, a friendship soon in the future when I can go Esteban. visit London or whenever you want to come visit me. You have your home here. <laughs> Thank you, Esteban. I would love to visit Mexico. If it was not for COVID, I would be already there because uh, I really want to visit you and your beautiful country. I'm sure it will happen. Otherwise, we can also do another podcast together to inspire people about art, about uh, any other 
topic related to art, whatever you want. To, uh, if you have an experience that you're going to do soon, I can interview about the experience because we love your words, Esteban. Thank you very much. And I love yours. So hope it's the first of many. Colors. Yes, me too. So what are you going to do now before we end up the podcast, Esteban? What's your plan today? Well, I, I'm receiving some clients from Mexico City here in the studio and two other curators that are coming also from Mexico City to, to check the details for the next exhibition that's happening next month in Mexico City. Very cool. I'm also going to finish two pieces that I have here on ceramics for the next exhibition in Oaxaca for the end of next month, the, next, the end of October. I'm going to keep a... Uh, to keep in track on this little animal that's going to pay a visit to the veterinary in a few hours. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'll just plan the, um, the, the next pieces because I just started painting on some mirrors that I want to, that I want to finish soon. And always when I'm back from the trip, I'm, I have the hands busy. So I'm excited to have so much work. Amazing. So no art se selling for Esteban. If you want to, you can ask for a beautiful painting if, you, if he likes you. Otherwise, bye-bye. <laughs> Very rare piece of art. I would love to actually <laughs> to have one in the future. And Esteban, thank you so much for your amazing um, yeah, discussion about art. No, thank you. Really, the pleasure was all mine. And let's keep in touch. I'll yes. see you very soon. And thank you introducing me to the beautiful world of technology because it's the first time I use this application. <laughs> and I think literally the first time I'm seeing Wi-Fi from, from a neighbor because that the house has no electricity. As you can see, it's just, just candles. So wow. <laughs> I, 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 I wanted to ask you if you could show us around, but maybe we can do this another time when there is a bit more connection too, because otherwise if we move the computer there. So also this house, the house is 480, no, now 400, 90 years old so wow. going wow. from one to another literally kills uh, the reception but uh hopefully one day soon maybe through my phone which is better maybe <laughs> if i visit you we can organize a, a video a video uh, conference sure. live <laughs> i'm sure we can do it well hope to see you very soon hopefully in person and have a great week you too, Esteban, amazing artist. Bye. Speak soon. Speak soon. Bye. Our guest. Bye, everyone. See you soon at Wellness and Wonder podcast. Mm -hmm.